to talk a little bit more about graph shifting in this video, talking about how to graph an exponential function. We'll keep it pretty basic today. I'm not going to do any uh, stretches or, or shrinks or compressions or anything like that. Just going to do uh, shifting the graph around and talking about the horizontal asymptote. So um, before we start, we'll just look at some parent functions of exponential functions. Um, and the general form for these, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, is this y equals some number times you know, your base raised to a power, maybe shifted left or right, plus some other number. So we'll, again, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit more later. But um, we'll start off here just graphing an exponential function to see what it looks like. And most teachers will start you off with 2 to the x, so you might be more familiar with that. So I'll throw 3 to the x in here just to switch things up a little bit. Um, and usually for exponential functions, a good place to start is whatever makes this x um, equal to 0. So in this case, I'm going to pick 0. And then I'm just going to pick one point on either side of 0. So I'm going to pick negative 1 and 1. Those are usually nice, easy points to plug in. So we'll start with the first one, 3 to the negative 1. Remember that that's not negative 3. That's 1 third. 3 to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then 3 to the 1 power, so if we plug in 1 here, 3 to the 1 is just 3. We could keep going if we plugged in 2. Again, I probably won't have room to graph this. Maybe I will. Um, if I plugged in 2, 3 squared is 9. Uh, and we'll, we'll stop there. That's a good number of points. So now to graph this, we'll graph our point negative 1 and 1 third first. That's going to be right down here somewhere, that point down there. Um, then we've got 0, 1, and I like to call this point the locator point. This is a good first point to find. Whatever makes this exponent equal to 0 is always a good starting point when you're graphing this. Uh, next we've got the point 1, 3, which is right here. And let's see if this fits. We might do this. So then we've got the point 2, 9, so it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, it'd be right up here somewhere. You can kind of see where this graph is going, though. So if we were to extend this out, you can see that this graph's going to be something like this. This is what an exponential function does. And actually, this uh, line right here is actually never, it looks like it's getting really, really close to 0, but it's never actually going to cross uh, this line y equals 0. So there's something called a horizontal asymptote, and all this imaginary line is is a line that this exponential graph is going to approach, but never actually going to be able to reach it. Okay, so um, this there's an invisible line that this will get closer and closer and closer to as we go towards um, you know very large negative numbers, but it'll uh, never actually reach zero, but it'll get very 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 close. Okay, so that's an example of um, one type of exponential function. You can really put whatever you want in here. It could be a two. It would change the chart up a little bit. You put a five doesn't really matter, or we can even put a fraction. And fractions will look a little bit uh, different here because when you have a number that is between, like this one, that is between zero, so oops, let's, let's use my um, thing up here. So when our B value, or our number that's being raised to a power, our base, is between zero and one, meaning it's something that's, that's less than one, uh, some sort of fraction that's bigger than zero but less than one. Our graph is going to go down from left to right, or we'll call that exponential decay. So it's going to do something that looks like this. Whereas when I have this number right here, this three, when that number's bigger than one, it's going to go like this. It's going to go up from left to right. So just something to keep in mind when you're graphing this. So let's, let's try this next one here. We've got one third to the x. And again, I'm going to pick these same exact points that I did before because at zero, that's my locator point, because uh, if I plug in zero here, that makes this whole exponent zero. So, you know, anything to the zero power is one. And then I'm just going to plug in negative one and one. If you take one third to the negative one, that just flips things over, so that makes that three. And then if we take one third to the one, one, that'll keep it as one third. And now if we notice here, if we graph these points, we've got the point negative one, three. We've got the point 0, 1, and we've got the point 1, 1 third. And you can kind of see it's doing the exact same thing that this red graph was doing over here, but it's kind of going downhill instead of uh, going upwards from left to right. Uh, and again, you can even try some more numbers. If I plugged in, if I 
extended my chart over here a little bit. If I plugged in negative 2, you'll see, uh, again, if I squared this and then flipped it over to the reciprocal, that would give me 9. And if I tried positive 2, I'd get 1 ninth. So you can see that as I go out here, 1 ninth is a little bit less than a third, so that'd be right here. And then negative 2 would be up here at positive 9. I think we said that's somewhere up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It'd be somewhere up here. And now that we've got this graph, you can see it's sort of slowly decaying here towards zero. And this has a lot of applications to things like half-life or the decline of a population, whereas the red graph would be something like a population explosion that we've unchecked. Um, those would all be different ways we could look at uh, these types of graphs in a real-life scenario. Um, but what I want to look at here is just some graph shifting. And all the same rules of graph shifting will apply that we had before. So if you look, whatever is in this x minus h or x minus whatever, whatever makes this equal to zero, so whatever makes that equal to zero is going to be your locator point. That is going to shift the graph left and right. I'm going to assume that you've watched some of my other videos on graph shifting, so you're familiar with you know, where this is going. You should also be familiar that that number kind of added on at the end will usually shift the graph up and down. We won't get to this guy today, this number in front of this. We're just going to worry about the b to some power. But this will stretch or compress the graph. Or shrink is another way to say that. Um, so that will kind of scale all your y values by a certain factor. Um, and, and again, if we make this a negative, it could also flip the graph upside down. But again, I'm not, not going to talk too much, so I don't want to get hung up too much there. Let's just go ahead and look at this first one. So what I'm going to do here is start by graphing the parent function, which is y equals 2 to the x for this one. So I'm not going to worry about the plus 1 just yet. I'm just going to graph y equals 2 to the x. And again, good place to start is at that locator point of 0, 1. And then we've got negative 1 and 1 that we'll plug in here, too. So uh, you'll get pretty good at this as time goes on. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the positive 1 is just 2. So if I now set this graph up, my locator point's right here at 0, 1. And then I'll be at negative 1, half, which is negative 1, 1 half, which is right here. And then we'll be up at 1, 2, which is right here. So you can see that the initial graph is making this sort of shape, if I wanted to keep going, I could do 2, 4. If you wanted to see what that looks like, we can. Um, and you can see that this is kind of the, the starting out shape for my graph. It's going to look something like this. So again, I'm just going to approach this horizontal asymptote here at y equals 0. So this is going to approach this line at y equals 0. That's what the um, horizontal asymptote would be. Uh, now that we're there, uh, what we have to do, since we have this plus 1, is we're going to shift everything up one because these k values at the end shift things up or down. So we're going to take all these points now and we're going to bring them up one. So this point up one, this point will go up one, this point will go up one, and this point will also go up one. And I'm losing points on my graph there. All right, there we go. Um, so you can see that all these points are moving up one square, and this now should be the graph. So we can actually move my horizontal asymptote up one as well. So the final graph is going to look like this graph here in green. So I'm going to actually go back and erase the red graph so you guys can see this. So let's get rid of this red graph. And now you can see that our green graph, assuming I don't erase the whole thing, is going to be our final answer. Reconnect those dots. Cool. Okay, so we got uh, the green graph finished, and you can see that our horizontal asymptote is right here at one. And again, I'll write this out for you. So our horizontal, a lot of questions will ask you for this. Your horizontal asymptote is at, and this is the equation of a horizontal line, so they need to have just a y. This is at y equals one. And the nice way to find those horizontal asymptotes is it's just going to be this. Uh, k value right here is what these problems were working on. Just be these k, the k value, so 1. In this case, our asymptote will get shifted down to 6. 
Okay, so let's uh, jump to the next one here. And this one we've got a four now, so that's gonna change things just a little bit. But um, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna start by graphing the parent function, which is y equals four to the x. I'm not gonna worry about any of the shifting here. And again, I'm gonna do negative one, zero, and one. So four to the negative one, that's just a quarter. Let's flip it over. Uh, four to the zero is one, and four to the one is four. So now I'm gonna start by putting a point at zero, one. I'm gonna go back a little bit and put a point at negative one, one quarter. And then we'll put a point at one, four, which is right here. Now we know that the starting horizontal asymptote is gonna be right here at um, y equals zero. But what we're gonna need to do is shift things around here a little bit. First off, we're gonna need to shift everything to whatever makes this zero. So if we set x plus two equal to zero, we can solve that to get x is negative two. Since that's negative, we're moving towards the left-hand side. So all my points are gonna move left two and down six. So I'm gonna take this first point, move it left two, and down one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's gonna be my first point. And then this next one, again, I'm gonna move um, over and down. So over, back two, down six. And this next point we're gonna move, and I don't know why my points are disappearing here, but uh, this next point, again, we're gonna move over or backwards two and down one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that should be our graph now. And notice that I've got a horizontal asymptote should be at negative six. So let's count down one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it does appear that this is going to have an imaginary line that is approaching negative six, y equals negative six. And then if we connect our dots, we should have our final Our graph should look something like that. Not my best work, but you get the idea. Okay, we're gonna try one more here. This is gonna be an exponential decay example because we have now a fraction. So this one, unlike the other two, should be going downwards from left to right. Um, so again, we'll set up our chart one more time here. And again, I'm gonna let you, if you wanna pause the video, think about what the parent function is and try to plug in your three points, you can do that now. And if not, we'll just keep moving. So our parent function here should be y equals one third to the x. And um, if we plug in negative one, that just flips things over to give us the reciprocal, which is three. One third to the zero is one. And one third to the one, anything to the one power stays the same. So that'd be one third. So let's go out to negative one, three. And then we'll go out to uh, our next point, which is zero, one, which will be right here. And then we'll go out to uh, one, one third, which is down here. And now on this one, again, we're gonna have to shift all of our points to whatever makes that zero. And that should be positive one should make that zero. So that should shift everything to the right one. And this should shift everything down two. So let's go ahead and shift all these points around. So if I take this first point, I'm gonna take it uh, right one and down two. That actually takes it right on top of this point right here. Now this point, which is kind of over top of that other blue point now, we're gonna take that uh, right one and down two, which would be right here. And this last one, we're gonna take it um, right one and down two. And we're about a third of the way, so this will be right about here. And now you can see that we've shifted this graph around so that it, um, it, it should be a nice kind of exponential function. It's also a good idea to draw in our asymptote at this point. Remember the asymptote's gonna be right here at y. So our horizontal asymptote, I'll abbreviate here, is at y equals negative two. On this last one, I should have written the same, wrote the same, which is y equals uh, negative six for our horizontal asymptote on this one. Um, but so we're down here at negative two, so that means there's an imaginary line right down here at negative two that our graph is going to approach but never actually cross. And then if we go ahead and sketch this blue graph, we should see should look something like this. And this will be this kind of uh, 
uh, curve that's kind of curving up that direction. Uh, and again, that's a uh, introduction to graphing exponential functions. I'll make a uh, part two of this video later where we will look at stretches and compressions where you might have some sort of number out front, like three times two to the x minus one, you know, plus five, and how we would graph that given that scenario.